Hello everyone, I hope you're good. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the exam guideline points for the gametogenesis processes. That is obviously spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Now, it is important that you know how to describe both processes uh, when going to write your exam. So this is obviously for paper one under the topic human reproduction. Now, the spermatogenesis process is normally about four marks, and the oogenesis one is normally about five marks. Now, there's obviously different ways of asking uh, about the gametogenesis processes, but I'm just not I'm not talking about the diagrams for now. I'm talking about the describing. So they may ask you to name and describe the process. So you firstly need to name maybe spermatogenesis or oogenesis, then describe. Or they may ask you to just describe the process. So sometimes they are not specific and say describe spermatogenesis and describe oogenesis. So they may say describe the gametogenesis process that takes place in the testes. So that is obviously spermatogenesis. Or describe the gametogenesis process that takes place in the ovaries. That is obviously oogenesis. Or um, the gametogenesis process that produces sperm cells or the gametogenesis process that produces egg cells. I hope you get what I'm saying. All right. Now, spermatogenesis is very easy and straightforward. So the first point for spermatogenesis, you need to say that under the influence of a certain hormone. So under the influence of testosterone, testosterone. So under the influence of testosterone, we then going to have diploid cells. These are cells that are having a full set of chromosomes. That's 46 chromosomes. So diploid cells. And these are cells that we are finding in the seminiferous tubules. Semini. This is an I. Seminiferous tubules. And these are seminiferous tubules. Of the testes this is all taking place in males of the testes they are then going to undergo meiosis which is a cell division process now they will then undergo meiosis in order for them to form four haploid sperm cells that's it that's all you need to write for four marks, guys. That's all you need to write for you to get four marks. Now, let me show you how this is normally marked. Um, under the influence of testosterone. So you need to say the whole thing for you to get a mark at the end just after testosterone. Then you need to mention that you have diploid cells. And these diploid cells are in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. Then just after the word testes, um, I think, no, 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 the tick is normally here. So diploid cells in the seminiferous tubules, yes, that's the tick there, of the testes, they undergo meiosis, then that's the next tick, that's the third mark, to form haploid sperm cells, that's another tick. So that's four marks. So very important for you to know how to describe the process, guys, it is straightforward. Under the influence of testosterone, that's the hormone. The diploid cells that are in the seminiferous tubules are then going to undergo meiosis. These are in the seminiferous, seminiferous tubules of the testes, right? They will then undergo meiosis in order to form four haploid sperm cells. Whether you have the number four or not, I guess it doesn't matter in this case. So, because they don't really have it in the past few members. Okay, so to form four or just to form haploid sperm cells this word is very important you need to include it in order for you to get a mark even here guys you need to say the diploid cells if you just say cells that is incorrect you need to say cells so everything that you have here since it's from the marking uh, not marking guideline but the exam guideline it's very important that you say it um like this i don't even want to say almost like this but like this in order for you to get the marks so just also to explain the process. So if, um, yeah, let me start here. So what we basically having here, I'm just going to have one cell, a diploid cell there. So if we're saying a cell is diploid in, um, 
in spermatogenesis. We're obviously saying that this cell contains 46 chromosomes. So that's the full set of chromosomes. Now, it will then undergo meiosis, whereby the first meiotic division will take place and two cells are going to be produced. Each cell is going to contain 23 chromosomes. It will be 23 chromosomes and they are replicated or dupl duplicated in um, in the end of or at the end of meiosis one, right? Now these two cells are then going to continue with the second meiotic division to then produce two cells each. At the end, you have four cells. Now at the end of meiosis two, you are then going to have four cells and these four cells are going to have 23 chromosomes each. And they are going to mature to become spermatozoa or sperm. So that is basically what is happening. The diploid cells in the, in the seminiferous tubules undergo meiosis. There is meiosis. And they are going to form four haploid sperm cells. Four haploid sperm cells. Haploid half the chromosome number. We started with 46 chromosomes in the diploid cell. And we ended up with 23 chromosomes. That's half of 46 in the sperm cells. That is basically spermatogenesis. Now let's look at oogenesis, guys. Um, this one has a few points. Um, it is normally about five marks in an exam. So let's look at it. Let me change my color to black. Now the first point in oogenesis, you have basically going to start by telling us about the diploid cells because here the diploid cells will need to undergo mitosis um, then we talk about meiosis. There's actually mitosis taking place in spermatogenesis also, but we don't really cover it um, in the matric syllabus. You don't have to mention it when you are answering or describing the, the process. But anyways, um, in oogenesis, you start by saying diploid cells, and these diploid cells are in the ovaries, diploid cells, in the ovary are uh, going to undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles. <laughs> to form numerous, many follicles. Okay. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of information about this but I mean it's not really explained or covered in grade 12 so I don't have to say a lot so numerous follicles are going to be formed as a result of the diploid cells undergoing mitosis remember mitosis is a cell division process whereby one cell divides to form two cells and those cells are going to be identical and have the same chromosome number so what we're basically having here at mitosis it will be the one diploid cell dividing to form two cells which are also going to be deployed. So it will have 46 chromosomes, forming two cells that have 46 chromosomes each. That is mitosis. Very different to meiosis. Okay? I hope it makes sense. Then, what will then happen during puberty? Now, at the onset of puberty, adolescent stage. On the onset of puberty, and this will obviously be the um this will obviously be under the influence of a certain hormone under the influence of FSH, which is the follicle stimulating hormone. What will then happen is that one cell inside inside this is deep inside a follicle is then going to enlarge. It is going to enlarge and undergo meiosis. It is going to enlarge and undergo meiosis. Then at the end, we are going to have four cells that are produced. However, from the four cells that are produced, that are produced, from the four cells that are produced, only one survives. Only one survives to form a haploid ovum. Okay, that's everything 
four, five marks. It will be any five points for the teacher's marking, but I, I don't even, I don't want to explain that. You just need to write the whole thing to make sure that you have fully described the process. Now let's break it down and see how this would be marked. Um, so diploid cells in the ovary undergo mitosis. That's the first mark. At the onset of puberty, that's the second tick. Under the influence of FSH, that's the uh, next tick. One cell inside the follicle is going to undergo meiosis. That's another tick. From the four cells that are produced, only one is going to survive and form a haploid ovum. 